What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. So today we're going to be talking about and looking at the new 1.18 update uh, that they just released a huge experimental snapshot for. Uh, if you want to go and look at the snapshot for yourself and see the new world generation and things that they included, uh, you can go and take a tour for Java or Bedrock Edition. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can go and download it for yourself. Uh, but is basically the brand new world generation that they are putting in the new update and also a few other changes that we're going to talk about later in this episode. So unfortunately this released at a time when I was out of town and I had to record on my laptop so the render distance isn't as nice as we'd like to see with all the new world generation but we can still see a very large portion of what the new 1.1a update is going to look like. Of course, nothing is finalized yet, but we can see there are some huge changes to the overall world generation in this new update. So, of course, they added uh, the new world height limit, which is way up now, and they had to make some changes to the cliffs and things like that, which are going into the new update. But they also changed the overall terrain of the entire world in order to fit with those new cliffs and how they're going to design everything in this new update. So there are some new biomes in this update as well. Those include lofty peaks, the snow-capped peaks, the grove, meadow, and snowy slopes. But because of the overall change in world generation, you're going to see a lot of biomes that you currently know in higher elevations as well without it actually changing the type of biome that you're in. So of course you can see here we have some acacia biomes uh, that are just way up in the in the clouds and you can see that this is definitely going to be a huge change to minecraft i don't know if they're going to leave the clouds at the same height that they are now or if they're going to make them higher up but i do like the feel of actually being able to build and fly through the clouds at a much easier rate than you were before we aren't going to see actual snapshots of the new update until later this year probably around september according to some of the tweets from the developers but we do get these experimental snapshots until then, and surprisingly, world generation isn't the only huge change that they've added in this experimental snapshot. Mobs will now only spawn in complete darkness, which is a huge change to how mobs currently generate now. Right now, they have to have a light level of Y7 or lower in order to spawn, but with this new update, they now need Y0, which is a huge change to the mechanics of mobs and is actually very beneficial for builders and people who have to work with a lot of space and lighting up those spaces. This is going to open up a lot of opportunities for different light sources and actually allow you to put very few light sources in your builds but still keep it lit up enough to prevent mobs from spawning. I think that this is a very beneficial update and so far a lot of people seem to like it. I haven't really seen a lot of negative feedback on that yet, but we'll wait and see if it actually goes in the final update. Of course, it would be great for builders and people who just want to uh, be creative and do things like that in Minecraft, but for the people who play survival and like the experience of having more mob spawns, then they'd probably like to see that as well. Although I think that nighttime will still be spawning plenty of mobs to deal with uh, for them. So, so far we've only been looking at the new world generation for the cliffs and new mountain ranges and things like that that we're going to see in the new update, but now it's time to look at the new caves. So of course uh, the Y level now goes to negative 64, which is incredible. We have a lot more room to mine in, but this is of course going to change a lot. Right off the bat, you can see a lot of those changes that we're going to be talking about. Uh, most of them consist of the new biomes that you're going to find underground. Uh, of course, with the dripstone and the uh, azalea biome, where you're going to find glowberries and things like that underground, which looks absolutely incredible. You'll see it here in a few minutes. Uh, but the caves look absolutely amazing now. Uh, of course, they're much bigger. You're going to find a lot different blocks. Uh, there's a ton of deep slate now. You're not going to have to deal with the blobs from 0 to 16. But if you want to find a lot of diamonds, you're going to have to deal with them uh, down at the lower levels towards Y-64. Other things that we're going to be seeing is localized water levels uh, deep underground. So you're going to be able to find uh, different pools of water, giant aquifers, all these new types of things in the caves, which I think look absolutely incredible, especially as you can see here, uh, the glowberries and things like that underwater or underground, I mean, look absolutely incredible. And you can also now get the drip leaf uh, as a block rather than just from the wandering trader. 
Of course, with these changes to world generation, uh, not only in caves, but with the entire mountain ranges, all that, we're gonna have to see some ore distribution changes as well. Fortunately, Mojang has released some images of what ore distribution will look like, and we can actually see them here on the side of the screen while I keep touring around uh, the cave systems. Uh, this is the 1.17 and earlier uh, ore distribution. You can see it's just blocks straight down basically except for Lapis. Lapis has kind of a triangular shape uh, and spawns more towards the middle of that shape rather than uh, in lower or higher regions. The way to read this is the width of the uh, block is actually how often it spawns and so everything that's rectangular actually has an even spawn rate from uh, the blocks that they're allowed to spawn in. Of course, diamonds, uh, for example, is 0 to 16 uh, on the Y level, and it'll spawn evenly between those areas. Now we can take a look at the 1.18 block distribution, and this is going to change drastically. So as we saw before with Lapis, most things are actually going to act like Lapis now. Pretty much all ores have a similar distribution uh, to Lapis from the previous updates now, uh, just in the fact that it is triangular and you're going to find more at certain levels than at others. Of course, uh, air exposure is now also going to affect all these spawn rates uh, pretty much, except for, as you can see, redstone, iron, and lapis, and coal at the top of the world. You're going to be able to find those at even uh, levels, except that they're going to have higher uh, rates of spawning in the areas with uh, less air exposure. Of course, this ore distribution is subject to change before the actual update comes out, but for the time being, this is what we have to look at, and we can see that uh, in order to find diamonds, you're more likely going to find them down at Y-64, but of course, you're going to have to go through a lot of deep slate, and you're most likely going to have to worry about the warden if you're uh, mining that deep. So there are going to be a lot of factors to look at when the new update comes out and as we see more snapshots uh, in the future. Overall, this experimental snapshot is pretty amazing. The world generation is absolutely incredible. All the new highs and lows of the world look absolutely amazing and I think the caves especially are one of my new favorite parts of the update. Uh, this is definitely going to change how we play the game of Minecraft and there's definitely going to be a lot to work through uh, for the devs because as you can see here there's just a little bit of jungle spawning in this acacia biome and I even found just a little patch of snow in a plains biome earlier so there's definitely some bugs uh, this is a very experimental version of the new update so we're going to see a lot of changes as we get more snapshots in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button because we have a lot of new content coming out. And of course, we're going to be covering all the new world generation and things that come out in the 1.18 update as soon as snapshots start getting released uh, later in September. Hopefully until then, we get some more experimental snapshots and we can continue to see how exactly the devs are taking the new update. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.